I am most honored and proud to represent the city of Pittsburgh and the fans representing our boss and our friend to the Pro Football Hall of Fame, Dan Rooney. When Dan Rooney was called to Canton, he became only the second son to join his father in the Hall of Fame. The oldest child of Pittsburgh Steelers founder, Art Rooney, Dan was born right around the same time the team became part of the NFL. Young Dan and the Steelers would grow up together. My father would take me to the training camp, and I went to the training camp before I was five years old. When he would take me, he was not a doting father that he was going to watch. And, you know, he would let the players take care of me. I would go on a lot of the trips, especially when I got a little bit older, maybe the 10 years old, and I would go to the away games, and we were on a train then. The players, you'd spend eight hours with them, and I'd take my homework with them, and they'd help me do my homework, would talk to me and things like that, and I became very close to them. As Dan grew older, so did his involvement with the Steelers. A high school football star in his own right, Dan learned early about the business end of the game. I actually signed football players before I was old enough to sign them. I wasn't 21, I'd have to get the coach to sign the player. I'd sign them, and then I'd get the coach to sign the Steeler end of it. By the mid-1960s, Dan was ready to assume a prominent role in the team's front office. His father gave him more responsibility and some good advice. Basically, I always felt that you had to be yourself. I think that how he operated was one thing and did it really well. I think that how I operate is different than him, but yet taking a lot from him and used to talk to him all the time. But I know my father would always say that, do what you think is right. Don't make a mistake, but do what you think is right. One of Dan's first achievements was securing a modern playing facility for the team. We came into Three Rivers in 1970, and that was the beginning of the dynasty that lasted that year. And I think Three Rivers Stadium really had a lot to do with that. The idea of a new stadium, a, a place that you could feel part of and be proud of. On-field success added to that Pittsburgh pride. The team finally became a consistent winner, and there was no prouder moment than the day the franchise claimed its first Lombardi trophy. Winning that first one, winning Super Bowl IX, you were really walking a foot off the ground. and uh, You know, it, it, it really meant so much. And to have my father there and to be with him and all the things that happened, it was, yeah, I have to say, it was one of the great moments of my time in football. Dan and his dad presided over four world championships in six years. Dan was also earning the reputation as an owner who viewed players as allies and not adversaries. Basically, we've tried to do things right and tried to treat the players right, letting the players be themselves. I don't see an adversary position. It's never been with me that I'm anti-player. As I've got older and got involved, even dealing with the union, Ed Garvey made a statement that the players are the game, and a lot of owners really got mad at that. That didn't bother me because I pretty much felt the same way. Dan became a moderating voice of reason during two contentious player strikes in the 1980s and was an architect in crafting the labor peace that followed. Rooney also established new guidelines to help minority coaches who had struggled to reach the top of their profession. The Rooney rule states that a team that's hiring a head coach must interview at least one minority. It is a shame that the Rooney Rule had to be introduced in order for black coaches to be considered, but thank God it was. Because without that rule, without that legislation of opportunity, those men who deserved an opportunity would not have had it. There was still one piece missing for Dan Rooney. No Pittsburgh team had won a Super Bowl since the passing of his father. But a 26-year wait finally ended when the Steelers beat the Seahawks in 2005, allowing Dan Rooney to once again hoist the Lombardi Trophy. I've been waiting a long time to do this. Mr. Rooney, this is yours, man. <laughs> the Steelers won their sixth Super Bowl against the Cardinals in 2008. 
At the time, the six championship rings made Dan Rooney a part of the most successful franchise in the NFL. But he always put the success of the league first, making him a champion in every sense of the word.